Yeah, start. All right, welcome everyone to the Brown Planning Zoning, uh, should I say the Planet Conservation and Development Meeting. Today is March 27th, 2023. And um, present in the room is our town planner, Moya Ducey. We have our vice chair, Diane Jorsey, myself, John Bealey, chair. And online, we also have uh, alternate uh, member, Stephen Viella, Jr., well, our regular member, Stephen. So welcome one and all, and because we are going to be punting for time, let's turn right over to Francisco, Francisco and see um, what we have, where we are. All right, thank you. <clears throat> and, and you can see my screen, correct? Yes, well, yeah. Good. Good, well, let, let's jump right into things. Our agenda this evening is very straightforward. Um, we, we've had a little bit of uh, feedback from the finance department since we met last month regarding the plan. So I'll, I'll walk you through what we heard from them and how we've responded. Um, and then I'd like to take some time to discuss the cultural resource section of the plan that was distributed to you all. And, and in particular, uh, the farms uh, section of that plan, because that, that uh, is something we, we wanna get right. We wanna make sure it's up to date. And so let, let's talk it through. And then I would like to revisit the future land use map because it was late in the meeting when we covered that last time. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you all followed along with the changes that were made, but it, it's a really important map. So let, let's cover that again with a fresh set of eyes. And then we'll talk about our, our next steps because we're, we're getting very close to having the plan finished. So uh, the, the finance department was particularly interested in us um, emphasizing growth as, as a goal um, in whatever way that we could, and basically expansion of the tax base, not just maintenance or diversification, but uh, growth and expansion. So and I, I looked through our strategies, our various action items, and we don't have anything specific. We, we, many of the strategies that we do recommend, particularly within the economic development section, really would support growth and expansion of the tax base. Um, but there isn't a single place we call that out, except for our broad overarching goal for economic development, which as it currently reads, really emphasizes maintaining a, a diversified property tax base. We don't directly say grow or expand. So as it cur currently reads uh, in the blue there at the top, it's foster a stable economy that leverages Berlin's location and commercial zones to provide residents with access to good services and employment opportunities while maintaining a diversified property tax base. And it seems reasonable that we could go a little beyond that and introduce the concept of expanding the property tax base. So uh, we revised it as follows, and I'd like your feedback on that. Uh, so it starts the same, foster a stable economy that leverages Berlin's location and commercial zones to provide residents with access to good services and employment opportunities while expanding and diversifying the town's property tax base. So that's it. And, and I believe that will address the, the interests of the finance department. Um, and I'd like to know what you think of it. Um, me, myself, I do like what's being proposed. And one thing that I had been, did jump out from the report was that um, as, as I was looking over it, I realized we spent such a large part of our time focused on affordable housing. housing. And uh, we didn't really address um, the need to stabilize the tax base through you know, manufacturing or industrial or commercial. Mm -hmm properties at whatever level. And I think that's something that we really can't lose focus on um, is to realize that you know you can grow a town population wise, but you you've got to maintain and grow your commercial as well. So I'm glad that that's in there. Okay. Yeah, I agree. So it's a good point that they caught to make sure that it gets yeah definitely okay. yep Steve, Steve did you catch all that yeah 
Yeah. Anything you want to add, Steve? No, I'm good okay. at the moment. All right, thank you. Okay, good. I'll check on that. Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, let's move forward. So we, we shared with you the, the last um, topic-based section of the plan, uh, the cultural resources, section seven. And I'll, I'll go ahead and pull that up, but I wonder if you've had a chance to review it and it, does it look look good to you? Is the right level of detail, a good balance between text and data, maps and images, that, that sort of thing. And let me let me go pull that up now. We could we could flip through it together. Well, as we're as we're flipping through, because I, I want to make sure I get this point in before I have to leave and come back or whatever. Um, when I looked at the historical uh, resources that we have, the homes that were listed, which I think yeah. were page 100, or I don't know what I'm going to report which page it is, but um, I thought you did an excellent job with uh, presenting some of the pictures, but I did see something that I liked, and that was there was a map included, and it earmarked the more important locations on the map to show you where the meeting house was, mm -hmm. et cetera. And, you know, as I look through these historical resources, the different homes and properties that are listed, I suddenly realized I have no idea where these properties are. And I also thought to myself, I know that some of them are privately owned, so you don't want to encroach on that, but it would be kind of neat to be able to have a map that maybe you can coincide the number, um, like the Augustus Moore Home and Property, the number with the number on the map like a generalized location. So that as people are going through and they see all these properties and they see the years, I mean, 1771, 1750, 35. I mean, that, that's pretty impressive that the homes are still cared for and that they're on the right street. So it would be kind of neat for us to have like a guide as to where these are. Okay. Uh, and most of those, let me let me jump ahead to that part of the document so we can all see it together, um, and then I, I can go back and walk our way through. Okay. And so here's the map you're referring to, and so here we just call out the listed historic resources, that being some of the individual uh, properties, and in, in, in the case of the Soldiers Monument, the monument, um, and the Worthington Ridge Historic District, which includes many properties, I think many of which you're referring to. And if I if I jump ahead, you'll you'll see it right uh, right here. Here are the many properties that comprise the Worthington Ridge uh, yeah. Historic District. So is it these properties you'd be interested in seeing on like an a map enlargement of that district to see how they fit together in the district? Yeah, perhaps that, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think about those properties and even with the cemeteries. Now, I know that the cemetery okay. has done and, and they have some cemetery headstones that are going back to, oh, my God, you know, 1600s or whatever to the almost the, the founding fathers of this of the town. And okay. the cemeteries are extremely well cared for. The commissions were working hard on cleaning them up, all the debris, new fencing. And they're even going to be restoring the old headstones. They're going to be going cemetery by cemetery. And I think that that is interesting because I know there's a lot of people that drive by them and don't even know that they're there or right. what it encompasses. So, I mean, that's sort of the wealth that enriches the community, I think. But that's my personal opinion. Okay. Yes. I think that'd be cool. All right. I'm yeah, we had done a map in the past, so I, I'll send the uh, send you that, Francisco, and we can look at updating. Oh, Good. that's great! That's great, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, we have maps of some of this stuff. One of the things that uh, kind of always uh, I don't know if it bothers me. I don't know if that's the right word to say, but um, we have so many more historical homes within the town. Um, from an age perspective, right. that um, haven't risen necessarily to the level of notoriety um, that right. some of the older homes have uh, risen to, uh, that they just what? seem forgotten. Right, and 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 likely because they they either aren't 
individually listed on the National Register or they're not within the Worthington Ridge Historic District. Yeah. So they're kind of invisible in some ways in that way and invisible to us too. I, I mean, we could go through quite a bit of work to find them, identify them and ascertain you know, whether or not they, they still have any value as structures, historic value. You know, they, in some cases, some of these structures may have been completely gutted and remodeled and covered in vinyl siding for all we know. Oh, wow. So in 1985, or thereabouts, the town did a historical resources inventory. Yep. And that inventory is in our office with the Historic District Commission stuff. Um, but I'm wondering if maybe a reference to it. That okay. Yeah. How about maybe it, a reference to Was the, it town wide or just for the World yes. Ridge District? Yes. It was. No, oh, it's town wide. I, now there is. Like I know somebody that owns a house that's really very old and it's not in there. So I don't know that there weren't things missed yeah. um, or maybe there was another reason it wasn't included. Maybe it had gotten, you know, modified enough or something that they didn't include it. But, um, but it's as comprehensive as it was able to be at the time. And it's, you know, right. it's, a, it's a, probably a two inch three ring binder. Felt. Right, right. So, okay. Um, but I would think that referencing that as a tool, and yeah. it is a tool that actually I was here a couple of years before I knew it existed. So, right. It's good to, to know what resources you have and reference them somewhere so yeah. that the next guy in line knows it exists. Yeah, and it's, it's very helpful for somebody who may have this on their coffee table or so looking through it. They'd say, hey, honey. Did you know that? Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's like, hey, go, let's go look. Let's take a drive. Or yeah. while we're out, let's remember to see if we can swing by and check out that place. You know, and I, I just think it, it just helps to tie people to the community and let them know that there's something more than the Berlin Turnpike and the Chamberlain Highway. Right. That there's actual history here. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah, right. just to mention also that we, we did get feedback from Lorraine Stubb and uh, Sally. Oh, good. And so, you know, they, they kind of helped us identify the ones that they thought were more, more significant. Okay, excellent, excellent. Those are good people to hook up with. Okay. All right. So th this, this section of the document covers a lot of gr ground because cultural resources are, are, are pretty, it's a pretty broad, class of resources. And so we, we try to take a pretty wide view of it. it it's not just historic properties. Um, and, and so the, the little graphic on the left um, you know, tries to give you an overview of, of the kind of the, the area it is that we're covering. And, and the purpose of this is to ensure these resources are continued to, they, they continue <clears throat> to be protected and our, our, their support uh, is continued going forward over the next decade because these resources are incredibly important to your identity as a community. Um, and while you, you can't necessarily quantify their value to the community, um, I think we can all, we all appreciate the fact that they do add a tremendous amount of value to Berlin and, and by Berlin having these resources, it's a more desirable place to live, which improves property values and your tax base. And there's there's all sorts of positive implications to protecting these resources and continuing to support them. So it, it's important to document them in this plan as best we can. And that includes everything from cultural and social organizations and events uh, such as the Berlin Fair, to your museums and libraries, to your farms. And you know, we already talked a little bit about this, monuments, markers, cemeteries, and other historic resources. So that, that's exactly the, the areas that we cover in this section of the plan. Museums and libraries, any questions or comments on this? And, and you know, we've, we've, it's about a year ago now, uh, 
more than a year ago because we covered this ground in January that we went through it for the first time after we did all, all of our existing conditions analysis. So I'm, I'm not trying to repeat that, but I do want to make sure that you know, we're accurately representing the resources that you have in, in the plan itself. So let, let me know if we're, we're you know, saying it right, if we're capturing the big ideas here and, and um, if we're missing anything. So uh, anything on libraries or museums you'd like to comment on? I don't have any comments. I don't, Steve, do you have comments at all? No, I like our libraries. Okay, good. And we talked a little bit about monuments, markers, and cemeteries. So as I understand it, you'd, you'd like to have a map of this perhaps to help uh, pinpoint these, is that correct? Uh, yeah, that was what Joan was requesting. She has left okay. for her meeting and she'll Right, right, okay. <clears throat> and and we, we talked a little bit about these historic resources already. There, there are different types of listings. Uh, goes from national to state to local historic listings or districts. And uh, so we explain that a little bit, the difference, because people can kind of get confused with it. Uh, the national, uh, national Register listing is a you know, pretty prominent listing. Uh, that being said, it doesn't give the town a lot of a lot of power to control what happens to those properties. Um, it's really a designation that enables a property owner to get some tax breaks on improvements and restoration and kind of binds them to a certain level of restoration. Um, but other than that, it doesn't give the town a lot of power to protect these properties. The state register is really just a list. It, it doesn't convey any, any particular advantages. It, it, the state just puts together a list of national register and local historic properties. And, and then local historic district really carries with it the most um, control for the town. And, and of course, by way of your lo local historic district commission. And the town only has one. We show it on the map at Worthington Ridge with many, many properties within it. So we, we walk people through all of that nuance in the plan. And one of the most prominent properties within uh, the Worthington Ridge District, as you all well know, it's a town owned property is, is the meeting house. Uh, so we, we try to document a little bit of its history and some of the efforts to reuse uh, the property because we know that's that's an ongoing effort. So we document that here and we document the other properties within the district that are significant and contributing to the historic district. And in addition to the properties within um, the Worthington Ridge District, there are all these other properties that have some sort of historic value, you know, primarily by their age or, or historic significance. Um, and so this is a list that was provided to us by uh, the Historical Society, and um, we captured all here. Uh, as to whether or not we'll be able to map all this, I, I'm, perhaps there's a lot of different data points here. If, if we can get a hold of some mapping with all this already mapped, it would make things a little easier, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. So that brings us to farms, which are incredibly important to Berlin's cultural identity. And we've been actively working towards getting this list updated. This, um, you know, for a community, uh, a community that's historically an agricultural community. You you have historically have lots of farms and farm properties, but they're not all actively used. So uh, here we put together a list of what we believe is our active farms, and that we just had um, email come through today um, with uh, a, a few others. I think that. I haven't cross-referenced the list yet, but there, there may be another farm or two that should be added to this list. 
Um, does anyone have any comments about this list of farms and in, in our presentation and discussion of farms? Um, I'd like to talk about it to um, kind of know what the criteria is for identifying. Sure. Um, and then looking at the list, uh, I think Ferndale Farm and Paul Farm are one and the same. Okay. Um, and uh, it's my personal belief that that should not have a farm designation. Um, but that's something that we can talk about a little bit more. Uh, okay. The Christopic Farm, uh, they are no longer active, to my knowledge, other than to be making hay. Um, they're not raising animals or anything. They're not really producing anything. Mm -hmm. um, Rooster's Rise. Uh, Rooster's Rise is only uh, receiving an agricultural designation at this point, as far as I can tell, because uh, they're having hay mowed on that property to maintain the 490 classification, but I don't believe that they really are um, growing anything. And they're engaged in a, like a retail market of sorts that they're selling products that they don't raise that, you know, they're retailing products that other people manufacture um, that really wouldn't qualify them for a farmer's market or a farm designation in any way. So okay. I'm not sure that they should be there. Um, and then there were other properties that I thought of on my way here that I'm not sure if they would fit onto the list um, because I don't really know what our criteria are. Well, let, let's talk about that. Um, from your perspective, what should be the criteria of a farm? Well, or an active so, farm, yeah. I'm not sure. We've got some conflicting um, regulations, I believe, within the town. Um, I tried to find um, our ordinance. Um, I know that there's a town ordinance that defines a farm as being five acres in size. Our zoning regulations um, have a 10 acre requirement. So there's a conflict within our own rules. Right. Um, and then um, properties like the Hall property, you know, what we're referring to as the Hall farm, um, that was at one time a much larger farm that um, subdivided and sold the bulk of their property off. And they continued to keep the animals on the smaller property. Um, but they're also under the 10 acre size for our farm zoning requirements now. Okay. And um, I don't believe that they are following the agricultural BMPs that they should be following. So yeah, he's got the animals. Yeah, he's slaughtering them and selling the meat. So, you know, he's, he's producing something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know if we're looking for, to identify locations that are producing and selling. Um, are you looking for locations that they have a hobby farm? Um, does the 10 acre zone requirement make a difference? So, so just from the zoning perspective, if it was an existing farm when the acreage got brought up to 10 acres, it would still be considered a farm because they wouldn't, we couldn't take the use away from them because they got superseded by a more acreage regulation, right? As long as they are still a farm activity. Um, and following rules, well, actually, we couldn't even take it away from them until they abandoned it. So, so even in the case where, like, uh, with the Hall Farm, when they subdivide and so, sell the bulk of their acreage, 
I understood that, that and that happened before I came. Yeah. But when I came, I was told they were an existing non-conforming size in use. So when they got subdivided, yeah. they must have been allowed to keep them agriculture. It was probably three acres at that time. Or actually, yeah, because they have a they have keeping of animals. Yeah. So keeping of animals until 2016 or thereabouts, what only required three acres. And a farm itself had no acreage when as long as they didn't they didn't have an animals. So um well by ordinance there's the five yeah acres. I'm I'm looking for it. I'm actually searching now because I wasn't able to find it by going through the so table of contents. So but. horribles would fall under that also, I guess, because the horrible property was subdivided yes. but but they kept that, that little portion as a lot. Okay. And, and then that again happened before I started here, but yeah. you know, when I came, I was told it was a bar. Yeah. And please don't be honest. So okay. So, so I don't I don't want to get stuck on a strict definition of a farm for as related to zoning purposes, um, whether it's a five or six or 50 acres. Um, I'm more interested in, in farming from, you know, is it really an active use? Um, is it something that's just fallow? Is it truly just a hobby farm? People are just growing for the, their own personal use? Or is it something that's actively producing some sort of crop or or animal product? Um, in, in which case, I, I think the broader definition suits our purposes here because what we're trying to demonstrate is that this is a farming community and it, it's, it still has several farms remaining, but those farms will likely need continued support to remain in operation, support by way of some flexible policies, um, you know, continued tax relief through the PA 490 program, et cetera. So I think we want to be pretty broad and, and encompassing in our definition of farm here. Um, you know, a hay field, a, a large enough hay field that, you know, that's a crop, whether or not it, the cows are on site or it's being sold to someone else's farm. It's a crop and it's a part of an agrarian landscape that I think is valued in Berlin. So I, I see that as, as contributing to, to your agricultural, cultural identity. I think a lot of the properties that uh, you might find in hay production now are, yeah. um, you know, there's only a few people in town that have the equipment to make the hay. Um, the properties themselves are not owned necessarily by the the people that are making the hay um, and so aren't necessarily identified by a, a farm name. Um, right. you, you might want to include a sentence that um, identifies that they were, uh, you know, that open acreage yep. uh, mains that's um, being managed agriculturally for hay production or something along those lines. Okay. All right. There's there are farms that come to mind for me, uh, but I really don't know if they're uh, actually producing at this point. Um, but right. the Spol Spolnik family with their horse boarding off of Kensington Road, um, Narrow with its little. What 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 uh, is the name of the family again? Can you spell that for me? Uh, the first one is Skolnick. Yeah. Um, I think it's. I'm not certain of the spelling, but S K O L. Okay. Uh, they're okay. at uh, Kensington Road. All right. Uh, Nero's have what I would call a hobby farm. They've got animals that are. Um, kept in a barn, um, they're, they're not selling anything other than eggs to my knowledge. Okay. Um, 
Spruce Spruce Brook, right? Savage Hill. Yeah, Savage Hill. Savage Hill. That's on. Um, Savage Hill. Okay. Over towards East Berlin, um, they're probably only producing hay, but the old Meisterling and Bakil farms. Um, they used to have dairy cows there. I don't know if they're doing anything more than hay. Um, Back Hill has an excavation business, so maybe um, maybe he's excavating. I don't know. <laughs> Back Hill actually has uh, beef cattle. How do you spell Back Hill? Uh, B A C K I E L. Meisterling is up where Back Hill's are. And where's the Back Hill farm? Um. I don't know the street name. It's where the Steve. Do you know the street name? Yeah, it is. Um, oh, geez, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, where the turkey shoot is off of, uh, like kind of across from White Oak Drive, whatever that little side street is. That's Beckley Mills. Road. Beckley Mills. Okay, Beckley Mills. Beckley and Mill Road. Yeah. Okay. Beckley, no, Mill. Beckley Mill Road. Beckley Mill yeah. Road. Two words. Oh, okay. All right. Um, the uh, All right. Chris and Sandy Coppola with their horses and horse boarding, I think uh, maybe you want to double check with them. I think they'd like to be a farm. <laughs> um, and then uh, I don't know the property owners, but uh, 2311 Chamberlain Highway, um, they've been doing a lot of renovations. They're raising goats there now. Um, and then the next property north of them, right at the crest of the hill, um, the guy, I think you've been talking to Jim about uh, creating parking for the Blue Trail access. That's all um, part of uh, what was. It used it's to be all better. part of the same better but, app. So that but, should be fun. Yeah, whoever the guy is, I don't know the name um, of that farm now. I know his name. But right. um, I I got his name. But and that's not him as far because that no. should have been farm. I'm sure it's more than be. Okay. So those are what came to mind for me. Okay. So of what we have on the list currently, what would you argue is definitely not a farm or should not be on the list uh, besides Ferndale and Hall being combined, but they should, should they actually be on the list? Yeah, I was, Diane, I was thinking Hall, I was thinking Allen Hall on the blueberries on uh, Southern Road. Oh, he's not doing blueberries anymore. Oh, see, I'm living in the past. Okay. So we can take that one off. Yeah, I All think right. I um, And the um, Connecticut grows, like they're out of business, I guess, now officially, right? <laughs> yeah. Which? Foreclosure. Which farm? Connecticut grows on Chamberlain Highway. Is it even there? It used to, it's not on the list. Oh, it's not. Was, did they take over Sunny Border? No, they took over what used to be the old Johnson Garden Center. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we it didn't have them anyway. They may not have been listed. Okay. Yeah, we didn't have them. Um, but Christophic okay. is not really actively farming. But but they have haymaking on their property, correct? Yeah, I um, I think the haymaking is somebody else making the hay. Right on on their property, cutting it for them. The same as the same as the right. case with Rooster's Rise. Okay, all right. They, so, so Rooster's Rise is do they consider the is Rooster's Rise both farms, both pieces of property? But they definitely have growing fields on the 
Right. The one without the bond. Yeah, but I don't think they're actually selling anything. <laughs> oh, I think they did bonds. Sorry. They have they have what they call run it markets from there, but I thought they also went to the bond market. They probably have that. It's true. But I could definitely get look yeah. into it a little more. Uh, to me, they're an embarrassment to agriculture in this town. <laughs> but that's I think. Okay. All right. So I, I think Sorry. what Another way we could go with the map is to yeah. just characterize it as examples of active farms rather than trying to have a exhaustive list. Right. Yeah. Or either examples or known known active farms. That's something like that. Yeah. And okay. we can keep, I mean, we're going to have like appendices that, um, so we could keep on working on this a little bit also. But let's, you know, we'll try to clean it up. Yep. The final draft. Okay, and then I'll add some discussion regarding some of these properties being used for haymaking only, you know, and and sometimes by by a, a a non the not the owner itself making hay, but someone else. Well, and it's it's a valuable activity because it keeps those properties open. Yes, absolutely. I I agree. Okay. Yeah, we had that. We got the list from the assessor dividing the 490 properties into categories, which I think we've mapped in the past. Which you know, we have a, an Excel spreadsheet, so we can we can get New England Geo to map it if we want. Doesn't hurt, and it's not like again, as we're talking about, there's like um, different definitions, but at least it gives you it gives you some kind of delineation. Okay, so we'll we'll tighten this up a little bit. We've got the direction. We'll we'll continue to dig into it. Um, and we did have some images try to bring bring this to life. And we we got what's Diane sent sent some more uh, images our way. So we've got a couple more we can mix in. I can send you more if you need them. I don't know how much room you have. Uh, yeah. Um. We could probably scatter a couple more in here. I did the couple you sent were, were look really nice, so I, I, I try to work them in. Um, you know, we and the purpose of this plan, we also need to not only intellectually connect people with lists and maps and and narrative, but just visually connect people with the significance that these places have in the landscape and 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 these pictures do a wonderful job of that. So they're, they are important. They're, they're not just filling pages, they're, they're telling the story. Well, you know, you could have gotten a better picture of my place. <laughs> I, I, I had a lot of pictures I was taking that day. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks like a farm. Well, I'm embarrassed that the greenhouse is sub covered. Yeah, well. You know, that's, that's the nature of farming. Okay. At least there's no plastic true. flapping. It is flapping. Oh, it yes. is? Oh, I couldn't see the plastic <laughs> flapping. I thought it was just gone. No, it's <laughs> flapping. <laughs> Oops. Okay. And then all of this you've seen, we're once again um, summarizing our, our recommended strategies and actions here. Did, does anyone have any more? comments regarding what we're recommending. We've been through this a few times already, but happy to receive any comments or questions. I think we're in good shape. Okay. All right, great. Uh, so let me exit, exit out of here and then go back to our presentation uh, because we, we want to revisit that future land use. Uh, have any of you had an opportunity to sit with this a little bit more? Any questions since we last reviewed this at all? And I'll walk you through the changes that we reviewed last time that will give you a little more insight into some of the work that's been done. 
Um, the only thing that comes to mind for me is yep. the um, the POD zone along Chamberlain Highway that um, there seems to be a lot of interest in most recently. Um, I think I think if you ask people, the expectation of um, citizens of the town is that that area would never be developed. And yet those properties are all privately held. And um, if it is in fact the intent of the town to not develop that area, um, I think the town should, uh, or perhaps the recommendation of the POCD should be that the town consider either purchasing that property outright and adding it to our open space um, or negotiate um, purchase of development rights. Um, so I, we're at a loss tonight because I'm the only one seated at the table other and with Steve, and I know that other people on the commission would have something um, to say about it. Where exactly is that property located along yeah. Chamberlain uh, Highway? Where south, are we at? It would be south of Orchard Road. On the west side or east side? On the easternmost, uh, the eastern side of Chamberlain. Right back. And all the way, almost all the way down. Almost all the way down. Okay. Yeah, no about that. It's basically that. All right. So we're showing this currently as rural, residential, and agricultural, which of course means you could develop some single family homes on it, um, but not it's, much more than that. It has some single family homes, but the zoning doesn't allow for any single family developments. For, for not for like subdivisions, but it, so it's large lot, single family. Now it's a POD, so planned office development, but it allows for it's, it's in a POD. That's that's right. Okay. So it allows, it allows for right. agriculture. Um, but well, we're pushing it in that direction with this map. You'll you'll notice that we're not calling this out as an office technology or a mixed use area. We're, we're calling it out as a residential area, rural residential at that. So we're providing support for only that type of land use with this map. Well, we're also recommending allowing house, you know, houses on these 10 acre farms, at least if. Right. So we have a foundation for that here. The, the to your point though, if you re really wanted to get specific about it, um, we would need to call out somewhere within our recommendations and and we'd have to figure out which section it's most appropriate in would would be a, a specific specific action to rezone this area as large lot single family residential comparable to what's around it. But we, yeah. we obviously need a good part of the committee to, to be on, on board with that. And, and um, we're, we're definitely laying the foundation for that with the future land use map because any changes to the zoning are supposed to be consistent with what this is prescribing. So this is the first step. The question is whether or not we can take the next step by recommending that specific change to the zoning in, in, in our plan. I guess what I'm, what I'm hearing Diane say is that more like uh, we have in the open space areas, we call out, you know, areas for connections or possible acquisitions that, and we have language about saving farms, but should we put this area specifically in yep. as yep. a recommended area for consideration for acquisition or acquisition of development rights in order to preserve the farming and rural character in that area? Well, Diane, do, do you think it's necessary that the development rights be 
acquired or conservation easements placed on this land, or it would be would it be suitable enough just to rezone it to real low density residential, like all the surrounding areas, and and that alone would be a limiting factor to how much this land could be developed. So the well, unless you go for the uh, mountain reserve zone, which it's not mountainous. Um, but the, our zoning only goes up to two acres. Our 86 zoning is what we right. currently have as our rules. And I'm going to say it was seven, eight years ago, yeah. rezoning that to our 86 failed. It did. Uh, okay. Due to the density of homes and not wanting it to be all subdivided. Now, I really, I wasn't the staff to, by the commission at that point. I, were you on the commission? Yes. So I'm not that familiar with the arguments for or against or whether it had a lot of public input or whether okay. it was more along with the, with the, you know, what the POCD had to say. I, I don't know that back. Okay. But it, the comments I heard on the street, let's say, are, yep. we don't want to develop with anything but farms for the most part or very low density housing if that was the case like you commented on the 10 acres or so so or the you know high acreage for residential so right um, i think to to make those things come together needs some thought as to what the recommendation would be and from I mean, the committee is really the driving force there to what is the recommendation and where would it go. Um, right. But one of the major property owners there did try to read something. Well, and I think what had happened was I think at one time way back, it might have been um, zoned for residential and it got changed to the POD. Um, and so the POD zone was intentional to prevent development there because mm -hmm. there are no services. There's okay. no, okay, so. That's an interesting approach, very interesting approach. <laughs> and so that was the goal was to keep it from being developed. They knew okay. the services weren't there, but at some point, you know, uh, Meriden is going to have a water line run by with potable sure. water. Uh, we'll make those lots suddenly developable. Right. Uh, and, you know, we just approved uh, a huge greenhouse operation that people are very upset about, um, yep. despite the fact that the zone allows for agriculture. So, um, right. Okay. It's a tough spot. <laughs> All right. Um, one of the scenic vistas that they want to preserve. Okay, so we'll we'll take a look at this. Uh, I'll confer with Jim and Maureen. We'll figure out what, if anything, we could do before we get this plan wrapped up um, to address that concern. Okay. All right, let, let's walk walk through some of the revisions that were made. And the, these were made over a month ago. I, I, I walked you all through them at our last meeting, but it was a lot, we covered a lot of ground that evening and it was pretty late by the time we got to it. So let's go through it once again. Up in the Northeast corner, we uh, changed a couple of parcels that we had classified as office technology. Uh, we changed that over to residential, and you can see uh, it was blue before, and now those two parcels are are green, and that's uh, rural, residential, and agricultural. Uh, closer to the center of town, Kensington, um, we made some pretty minor changes at the bottom. Uh, we had an area that's zoned industrial. We had a class, or, or vice versa, that 
it, um, it, it was, we had a group as industrial and, but it's, there's actually, it's developed as residential, um, even though it was originally zoned industrial. So we, we show that it is in fact residential. Actually, work homes, yeah. Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, up here, there's across from the mill building, there's a lot owned by the mill building that's intended for higher density development. And so we show it as such, as medium density development. We changed the Ferndale Plaza area from mixed use, just back over to commercial, because uh, we had some pushback on that. Folks had some concerns about that. Um, over here, we made some uh, very minor changes to the classification of these parcels. Once again, we have some residential development in, in the, this area. So we show it as, as residential, um, another older mill building here that's entirely residential. Rentus. And we, yeah, thanks. Yeah. And we extend the Kensington Village, the village district, just north by a couple of parcels to, to meet it. So th those are all fairly minor changes. And if I scroll down to the, down here, we, um, Did you we talk talk about the um, Banning Road industrial question? Oh, yeah, uh, sorry, I skipped right over that. Um, I, highlighted these areas because we wanted to talk about them. Uh, Up at the, the yellow circle too. Yeah. Right. Uh, so Deming Road, we're, we're currently showing these as industrial zone industrial. There, there are um, some homes in this area. Uh, you know, some marginal structures, marginal properties. Now we are we are trying to protect industrial land wherever we can. The area is zone industrial, which is why we show it industrial. However, they have current residential uses, but they're not high value properties. And it's pretty easy to imagine those being acquired, redeveloped for industrial use. So we show it as industrial. However, they are adjacent to moderate density residential. So we have a choice of expanding that moderate density residential to the west or keeping this as is. Yeah, and the trailer parks there obviously too. Yeah, the trailer park included. Any sense of change or leave it at industrial? Uh, going once, going twice. <laughs> I don't know if I have a strong feeling one way or the other. I think of that as being more retail than industrial. Yeah, there's really no retail on that side of the street on the south side. Though. You know, you got Native Brothers and that they have a little industrial building there and, you know, up then there's the other, fa there's a, other factories. Yeah, there's there's several industrial there. There's uh, Yeah, so because we're west of the turnpike. Right, right. Yeah, so it's be basically between um, the Deming and works, the what do they call it? The wood course housing, whatever yeah. that is. Fieldstone crossing, yeah. yeah. Right, fieldstone crossing, and where the new industrial buildings with the golf yes. guy is. Yeah. So there's our, I guess some of them are kind of public style industrial what? use. Let me do this while while you're talking about it. I'll pull up Google Earth. Well, so just we, south. We'll zoom that, right in. So go ahead. Just south of that is um, the mixed use development that we just approved, also with the housing. And right. I don't know. I don't feel strongly one way or the other. Do you have thoughts, Steve? I don't see a problem leaving it industrial. It's kind of an industrial area. Yeah. I thought that's what Tim said also last time, but I, it was late, like Francisco said, and it could be wrong. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it is, you know, in terms of trying to make the 10% and, you know, an area 
for consideration. But if if somebody comes in with um, you know workforce housing development, like a you know like a uh, fieldstone type of thing or whatever, we can always change it if you want to change it in the future. But leave it industrial now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so here's here's a good look at it. And here's here's what we're talking about. This we have fieldstone crossing, we have categorized as moderate density residential. And then you have the mobile home park owned by the town and a handful of small residential properties that are all in an industrial zone. So the question is, do we group this group of properties with these, or do we group them? with these and it's zoned industrial and we know that we're trying to protect industrial land to the greatest extent we can now us mapping this area as industrial doesn't doesn't um it, it's not like rezoning these these properties to make them well they're in an industrial area already so we're not we're not recommending a zoning action that would change them from a residential district into an industrial district district they're already zoned that way so it's really just us reinforcing the this zoning district as appropriate for these properties yep that's fine okay. all right so we're good with that good now if i go down this this will be helpful for us to go down to the next couple of properties a lot of land. Uh, so I'll toggle back and forth, go back to our map. We're currently showing, and, and is Golden Triangle the right term to be? What are we calling it this, these days? Hilltop or? Hilltop. Golden Triangle. <laughs> They're calling it Hilltop. We, we're still all calling it Golden Triangle. Okay. Chris we, is we have, Hilltop. Yeah. Where are. <laughs> we have it classified as mixed use. The property across the road is zoned office technology. And so we have it classified as that. And I want to have a discussion about that as well. Uh, but let's talk about the properties themselves and whether or not we, we have it they, them classified appropriately. So here's Hilltop or Golden Triangle. I think you can see a good a lot of wetlands down at the bottom here. Um, this is mixed use, obviously. Abuts Route 5, I know there's some significant grading challenges here, so access to the property is not easy. Um, so this is mixed use. This property currently zoned is office technology, which allows both residential and office development. Um, the access here, this is, as I understand it, mostly wetlands all through here, this bottom corner. Uh, so no direct access from Mill Street would come off, access would come off Beckley Road, which is a residential street, a small lot residential. Um, so do we want to recommend anything else for this property other than more or less what it is currently zoned for, which is residential and office? Is, off, is residential allowed in the office technology? Or am I am I saying that incorrectly? Office, I'm I'm sorry. Office and it's like light industrial technology type office. Yeah, I think it's OT, but if there's OT and there's OT two in terms of zones, and I don't think yeah. the residential. Maureen, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I don't think, no, I was convinced. I was confusing with OT two. I forgot about OT two. I was so no residential now there. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. And so we had that land use category that was just a couple of parcels now we're whittled it down to, uh, but, you know, Eversource and here. And right. Yeah, I mean, again, Francisco and I and Maureen, we talked about it. It's like, you know, it looks like there might be access from Mill Street, which, but because of the wetlands, I mean, we've looked at that before and it's really going to be tough to get access from Mill Street. So they'd have to come off of Beckley. So I don't know. I just I'll throw it out there from you know what I, I what I would sure. suggest is that we consider making it a you know in terms of land use, make it mixed use, and you know 
then the only thing it would in the office technology category would be Eversource headquarters. And then I think it would be kind of overall consistent, but um, I don't know what people, I know, you know, what people think about that area. It's an in-betweener. And, and so that's exactly what Jim's talking about. We have one area here and this, and that's all we have left for office technology. And it, it's just a very odd class. I, I think everything else is pretty intuitive with respect to land use classes. And then we have this office technology class, which for lack of a better name, that's the name of the zoning district and that's what we're using. Um, but uh, we think, <laughs> we don't think it's the best, the best practice just to refer to the zoning district because then it kind of locks it in with and conflates it with the zoning district itself. And it might be better to establish a more um, intuitive classification for, for these areas. The question is, you know, what should the name be? And and is this area, in fact, should should it be in that group or should it look more like this area in terms of its potential future use? And again, may, may, saying mixed use doesn't mean it has to be the same scale or, you know, kind of uh, density or mixture of uses, but just mixed use. So, over the churches, yeah. Like the church, it's an open area. It's behind Golden Isles. No, it's the north side of the cemetery. So, uh, see where the number 372 is on the map? The blue section is what we're talking oh. about. All right, so you're talking about the blue section. That's the church. Like that. That's an economy behind. behind. Yes. Behind the uh, westernmost point is mostly wetland. The eastern side is houses. The office technology zone. So, what's what's the purple across the street where the golden triangle is? What is that? That's mixed use. The pink. Yeah. Yeah. This this pink color is mixed use. That's so mixed commercial. Use residential could be office commercial could be retail residential jim is that the uh, is that the gold that's yes. the golden triangle that's a mixed use well that's correct where, that's where we're, we're categorizing at this point all right so he's asking for guidance yeah okay technology right now. so let me just yeah so okay. so that the main part of the quiz is that office technology is actually a zone yeah so instead of using a zone name and what would you want how would you want to classify it but also have the name that's the same as a zone yeah i mean i think that's where, where i was going was it hard question if you redid that Mill Street piece into something else like mixed use, again, it doesn't have to be, could be as Francisco said, mixed use of anything, but, um, and then just leaves Eversource and you could call that, you know, corporate office, which would be descriptive and, you know, but it, we, have, we have to decide um, how we want to categorize the, uh, the Mill Street, you know, Mill Street piece there, Mill Street and back there. Right, because we don't want this to be corporate office. No, I mean, it's not realistic. We'd like it to be <laughs> small. Yeah. What is it um, where the bio brick guys are? The other side. Is that Industrial. Side? Yeah. Industrial, I believe. Yes. It's that purple on. Uh, the right hand side of Beckley, just below the orange, right? North yeah, above, of the orange. Above, so above, above Route 9. Above Route 9. Just yeah. keep going. Right? right? Is it a little further? It's up there, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's right, you know, right below that. No, not that far. Further down. Yeah, just above Route 9, right there, right there, right oh, there. Okay. And then, you know, of course, that's you got the North uh, Eversource Transformer Station. On Beckley, you got all those uh, power lines cutting through there. You've got the Metabesset pipeline cutting through there. So um, there's a lot going on over there. Never source, 
owns a lot of that. Well, so you've already got residential use there. It probably makes the most sense to have it be mixed use. It would blend the best with the church and, you know, allow residences still. <clears throat> Kind of combined with the golden triangle. I would stop with the golden triangle because it's housing. Well, yeah, so the mixed use for the golden triangle, I guess, is what's perplexing on this. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Can you hear that? I guess yeah, we're, absolutely. yeah, I'm sorry. It's just that I, you know, I'm looking yeah. at turning that over to mixed use. Francisco, what do you see as a trend for property that um, has such access um, to these different throughways? Yeah. Right. Because, I mean, that's what makes it golden <laughs> yeah a ab absolutely um that so what what makes this property really advantageous for mixed use development is the fact that it has great visibility from both highways um so for commercial use it's great however we know the market right now is particularly strong for residential and mixed use development and you are abutting some residential areas so by by enabling either or both types of development um you're you're not you're not requiring it to be mixed use you're just allowing for residential or commercial or mixed you're allowing for that mixed you're providing the most flexibility as possible which would help improve the feasibility of the redevelopment of the, of, of the or the development of this site um, you know with respect to industrial the, the conversation came up earlier uh, about potentially I, I know the economic development department's potentially interested in this site being industrial because they would like to have more industrial land the topography does not necessarily favor those uses which require large build large footprint buildings large areas um and it, it's not a great match with the residential properties surrounding uh, so i think they're they're comfortable with a mixed use scenario because they're having some commercial development helps to grow and diversify the tax base uh, and i think they would from an economic development perspective, not want to see this area be exclusively residential. Uh, so it puts mixed use right in that viable spot from a market perspective and from the, the town's perspective with respect to the economic value of these properties. And so with a mixed use, would um, something um, like the medical research and um, uh -huh. Uh, medical office buildings, things like that, would that be um, something that would be possible in those areas? Yeah, let, let, well, let's skip ahead to our description of mixed use. Um, these areas are intended to accommodate mixed use development with existing sewer and water service areas. They allow for a medium to high density of commercial, residential uses, and institutional uses. So commercial use would, in, would potentially include office, medical office. It's a fairly broad classification that we have, but notably absent from it is our industrial uses or exclusively residential uses. But a mixed use does not necessarily require that you have commercial and residential. So if somebody came in, if this was mixed use, if somebody came in and said, I do want to do a spray of offices that are like surgical, you know, on-site, uh, you know, medical buildings, they don't necessarily have to put housing. It, it really depends on your zoning, the zoning that you develop for this area. And 
right now we're just trying to lay the foundation for any future zoning work by pointing pointing the town in the right direction with respect to what you know what the plan recommends and by recommending mixed use enables you to do provide support for you to do some zoning work to figure out whether or not that would be a, a requirement like along along the Berlin Turnpike with the BTD where you have some requirements for uh, residential development along with commercial development. Is it possible to have a commercial zone that has an, a, a special permit application within that for housing? In other words, so yeah. taking the same property, you have basically a mixed use zone. However, uh, your primary is gonna be commercial. But yes. If you decide to go and propose housing for the same area, that portion would be a special permit held to a higher standard. So you don't get these. Um, these yeah, it, it is possible. You could, you could have commercial development be approved with the site plan uh, and, and you could require a special use permit for any residential development. You could do that. Yeah, I think, you know, again, we're going to get to that BTD analysis, but, you know, the thing we've talked about, I think, to some degree already is the, that there was not a very strong requirement for commercial, which, you know, you can certainly, you can create the balance, what do you, however you think it's appropriate for that location. I mean, we could require a certain percentage of commercial, you know, we've been talking like 10 and 20%, like 20%, 10, 20%. In the T, in the TOD area, it might be a lot higher here, but though that that's a kind of detail we can discuss. But the con overall concept is flexible, I think. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure that we stay away from, you know, geez, oh, we're going to give you, you know, two hundred units of housing, and they're all going to be like two blocks, mm -hmm. just two blocks in, inside of this thing, and I, I really, um, and, and, and it has to be a way to push for a better design. When it comes to the residential portion of that, but maybe that's deeper in the regulation. Okay, I have about four minutes left before I have okay. to start another meeting. Okay, I'm hosting and running that meeting, so I, I need to jump jump okay. in at on time. But we we're just about there. Uh, future land use category we did. And we covered this last time. We did update the neighborhood residential description to specify senior housing developments and office technology. I, you know, I'll work offline with uh, Jim and Maureen to get this figured out. So, do I understand you're comfortable in moving forward with mixed use for that um, Beckley Road property we talked about over here? I think. So. For me, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, as long as we have some control over, as long, okay. as, long as we have control over the design and stuff. Whatever. Okay. In uh, which case, the, the renaming this area up here will be pretty straightforward. We can go with corporate office or something like that, designation similar to that. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Um. So our, our next steps, it's our goal by the end of this week to uh, revise the document, and I'll have to see about some of the mapping we discussed, but we'll, we'll uh, revise the document. And we'd like to, and if, you know, maybe this doesn't happen at the end of this week, maybe it's by the end of next week. Um, we'd like to share a, a draft with council and, and CROG for comment. Um, and that basically puts us in the position uh, in April to potentially present our draft plan to council uh, at a public hearing, which they have on four, on April 18th. That would give an opportunity for the public to, to see what we've been working on. We'll, we'll use our next meeting, assuming we get some feedback from council and, and CROG, we'll use our next meeting to review uh, that feedback and decide if we need to make any changes to the plan and then go ahead and, and make those changes. Uh, and then we also want to potentially in April start our zoning work. We're scoped to do a little zoning work around affordable housing and the BTD zone. 
Um, that would put us in position to file our plan with the town clerk in May, continue our zoning work and potentially bring the plan for a public hearing for adoption in, in June, uh, potentially at June 8th or June 15th meetings. Um, Maureen's trying to work on the calendar. It's, uh, I understand it's a pretty busy month, busy overall, but we're trying to figure out how to slot that in. Uh, so that we have a process that we need to follow. Uh, if we get this plan wrapped up by March 31st and shared with council and commission, we could hold our public hearing no earlier than June 5th because of the statutory requirements. So, which is why it's critical we we make these decisions and get things wrapped up. And so that puts us in kind of a quiet period once we submit the plan to people for comment, and that will allow us to focus a little bit on on zoning and get that process launched. And, and I really do think we, we should take this to a public hearing in June before everyone disappears for the summer. Okay. Our, our next meeting, April 27th, uh, or Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Right. And with that said, uh, I have to jump off, so if you want to adjourn the meeting or continue, that, that's your business, but my presentation is done. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much. I'll follow up on everything we discussed this evening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks All right. for thanks. Have a good night. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye for now. Have a good one. Thanks, Steve. Good night, Steve. Thank you, Steve. So I'm not sure. Oh, you guys are done? We're adjourning? Okay. Uh, we're not having dates right now, I think. Yeah, yeah, we're just trying to figure out date. April 27th is the date. Yeah, April 27th is the next meeting. That would be the point. Yeah. 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 Steve, so you know April 27th is talking about yeah. being our next yeah. meeting. Okay. It's still being here, I'm not sure. All right, and that's for that's that's at five thirty, Steve. Okay. All righty, and then um, I'm going to be out of town the first week of June. I mean, I'm not leaving till Friday after our meeting, so I don't want to have to handle another plane. So, I don't so the eighth, you'd be away. Uh, the eighth, I will be away. So one of the reasons for the June meeting. Um, so the Planning and Zoning Commission has a meeting on the 1st and the 15th, but schools out should be out the week of the 15th. So we were wondering if it would be more appropriate to try to have a public hearing on adoption or adopting the plan on the 15th before the 15th, before people left because school was out. So that's why we were throwing out the age for the chair. That's a little bit of a... Yeah, I'm leaving a, a, I'm leaving on the second, coming back on the ninth. So, Jim, we thought the first of June was too soon. Did you, if I remember our conversation correctly? Yes. Is that planning and zoning? So, like the, the the sixty-five day issue too, you know? Right. We had to hit the sixty-five days, so we'll do some more counting of days in the next. I'm sure Jim and Francis will be emailing me probably tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, uh, you know, the idea that, well, first, the, that the council doesn't have to have a public hearing, but we try to make that a public hearing because 
again, we know that we're, we're pushing it at the summer. So if we can say that we had a public hearing earlier, that would be good. And then, yeah, I mean, you don't have to, you know, once we get to that point, you don't have to close the, close the public hearing and you don't have to act on the plan because we, you know, our plan doesn't expire until September 1st. So you have some slack if you need it, but, you know, realizing that we're, we're just trying to make sure that people, the public has a chance to, you know, comment before they leave for the summer, really. More than that the commission, you know, has, has, makes its final action. I think most people have vacation plans uh, for that month, at least locked in at this point for the most part, but would it hurt to put anything on our, like on the town's website or uh, like upcoming events, uh, watch for, you know, the announcement of the public hearing on the POCD, just so that people don't, um, Suddenly, yeah, or suddenly say that, you know, we're trying to sneak something through because we know everybody's going to be on vacation. And so that's why we're doing it then, you know, yeah. that's human nature. That's <laughs> people are just going to be. I mean, we're, that's why we're having the meeting, the, you know, the, the council meeting in April, but, or, you know, but then we can. I don't know, Maury, we could talk about this, but I mean, I suppose we can have another presentation, you know, in May even, right? And, yeah. and but we can't call it the public hearing because we don't have all the, we wouldn't have the 65 days at that point. Yeah, with that's the, all with informational the session. Yeah. We want other reasons to have the, like you said, the input at the town council to have the public be able to, and then, Tweaks can be made in that time period as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, substantial do substantial things, but you can change, you know. Well, because once we're in public hearing, then there's not much we can do to change it, right? Right. right. Um, you can change yeah, you want, you want yeah. your draft plan to be pretty close pretty to the pretty close to the final document yeah. before it goes to POS up to the plan the zoning commission's public hearing for sure. Because so we have to send it to Prague and Town Council, like Jim said, within 65 days. Yeah. And that's it's April. You know, yeah. We're 65 days landing in June. So it's just the nature. So we'll count some days and we'll figure it out. Right? Yeah. And then go yeah. back. Yeah. Now we know what you're not saying. So I'm in and again, like Jim said, just because the public hearing happens doesn't mean your deliberation happens. It has to happen that same night. Yeah. You know, and your adoption of it. Um, that can that can be separate from the public hearing. Public hearing is true. You didn't hear comment. So. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. We had, we had all that time and what happened? <laughs> yeah, I know. Not to the I end. Know. <laughs> like yeah. always, right? I know it always is that way, no matter how much you prepare. Right. All right. Well, I think that that's just about it. So let's turn at 7 2. Yes. All right. But so good night, everyone. Oh, motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Okay. Steve, will you second, please? I'll second it. Thank you. We don't Thank you. Have all. a good night. Thank you. Favor, aye. Those opposed, so Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, Joe. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.